Hi, my name is Ben Jones, and I'm a subject matter expert with Wiley Efficient Learning. And as we go through today, I essentially want to give you some tips and hints about the CFA exam, in addition to the fact of being able to integrate across a, maybe a couple different areas so you understand how things weave themselves through the financial statements, through some of the finance learnings that we have, and other aspects of the exam so you can be successful and pass this thing. Well, today I'm going to talk a little bit about equity valuations, which is normally near and dear to everyone's heart who wants to be an analyst because you've got to value a company. And this is one of the ways that you do this. Let me go ahead and pull up a question. Let's dive in. If we're looking at this particular question, we know that by looking at the question set stem, it asks for the value of the stock today. What is it closest to? So you know right out of the gate you're going to do an equity valuation. If we start to pick apart the individual portions of it, we see that there's a risk-free rate there, a required rate, 15%. You've got a dividend that's coming up, right? It's a projected or expected in the future of $2.80. And you know that the company is going to grow by 14% going forward, all right? So let's ask ourselves just a little bit about uh, this question. We should be thinking off the top of our head that this is what we call a dividend discount model calculation. Strictly speaking, we're discounting cash flows back to today's dollars. Now, the thing is, is this is just one of the theories that we look at. And this one in particular has to do with companies that are mature, that can withstand a business cycle. I oftentimes like to think about people are going to continue to, to need toothpaste, toilet paper, and everything else. And so at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you're on a really bad down cycle or a really up cycle, you're going to have enough cash to throw off dis, or dividends as we go. So let me write this down. The dividend discount model you're essentially calculating the value of the company, which is equal to the future dividend that you're looking at. You've got the required rate of return, and you're subtracting that from the growth of the company. Now, how do we get this? It's strictly from the discount of cash flows. But when we take into consideration the growth of the company, then this is just a derivation. So do we have the information that we need? Absolutely. We know that the upcoming dividend is $2.80. We know the required rate of return was that 15%. We subtract out the growth rate. When we put all this stuff together, the 2.8 over the 0.01, we know that this thing is going to turn into $280. If you'd like to dig a little bit deeper, then join me at efficientlearning.com CFA.